Hi, everybody. It's Olivia Scott with Freedom at the Mat. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, you know by now that Freedom at the Mat is all about living our lives freely and authentically. Today, we're going to have a conversation with a woman who I've known for over 15 years. My life has been so much better for it. Her name is Jody L. Teich. Jody hails from New York City, currently living in Austin, Texas, and she began her career as a PR practitioner and has evolved over many decades. I won't tell you how many. She may tell you that later. Many decades to become a pet expert and a health coach. So I'm going to bring her in. I hope you enjoy today's conversation as we really talk about the evolution of a woman. Hi, Olivia. How are you today? I am blessed. I am so wonderful and so well. You know, Jody, you know that you're one of my all-time favorite people in the world. You've been there with me from when we worked corporate to when I started my first firm, and you mean the world to me. So I'm so grateful you made time today to be with us. Well, right back at you, sweetheart. You mean the world to me, too. And I'm so grateful and honored to be here. So thank you. You're welcome. So Jody, I have had the privilege and the honor of watching you evolve as a professional, as a mother, as a human being. Can you tell us in your words, what does it mean to evolve? To me, it means to grow and to learn. And every day there are so many learning opportunities that are presented to us. Um, and Growing, I think, happens in conflict. So when things are really easy, um, I don't think it's the environment for growth to take place. So to me, evolving is growing, meeting challenges, um, looking inside, and learning. And I've been very blessed to have opportunities come into my life that have allowed me to do that. So Jody, you're being so humble and so beautiful, which is the, the magic of Jody Teich. But do you mind just telling us a little bit about your journey, whatever you want to do, because you've had a beautiful, robust, dynamic journey, a little bit about your journey and what catalysts have led to you evolving to being the woman that you are today and to being the pet health expert that you are today as well? My journey started with uh, my PR career, at least my, prof my professional journey. And, um, but even before that, as a kid, I was always an animal nut. I loved animals. And I got very interested in natural medicine early on, probably in my 20s and early 30s. And uh, so that was always in the back of my mind. Um, but my PR career was a long one and a colorful one. Um, I was blessed to have a wonderful uh, roster of clients over the years, uh, 30 years to be exact. When I was sort of ready to retire out of PR, uh, the entertainment industry was changing a lot. And um, I wasn't passionate about what I was doing uh, anymore. So um, I stepped back after 25 years running my own company, JLM PR, had a big party and um, decided to kick back for a little bit. But of course, I'm a type A, I'm a type A New Yorker and kicking back doesn't last very long for me. So literally within six months, I think, um, I got a puppy. I decided I wanted to explore another passion of mine, which is fashion. I enrolled in Parsons School of Design. I'm very blessed to have been living in New York and having that school, world famous school, like around the corner from me. I learned how to sew and thought I was gonna do a design label for women, but made 
practice coats for my new puppy and people kept stopping me. So I pivoted and started a uh, firm making high-end dog coats and accessories. And it was called Couture by Sophie after my new puppy. And that lasted for a couple of years. I think many of us are familiar with pivoting based on the pandemic. But how did that feel to you to, you were at Parsons, you were going to start a fashion design for clothes for human beings, and then yes. you kind of do practice coats, and then you pay attention to the feedback and you decide to lean into that and pivot and create a whole different company. How did that feel yeah. in your journey? It felt very natural. Um, I've done a lot of pivoting in my life. And... I wish I could say that it was driven by a keen sense of market analysis. (laughs) But it's not. Um, I do a lot in my life based on my gut. Mm -hmm. And um, it felt natural. That pivot felt definitely felt natural for me. I love animals. I was focusing on my puppy. um, And it was a space in the market that hadn't been filled yet. So I was an early person in the luxury dog fashion space. And that was both a plus and a challenge because Mm -hmm. at that time, and this was back in 2011, 2012, people weren't spending two, $300 for a dog coat. But I was making coats out of cashmere and going to M&J, you know, trimmings on in the garment center where all the high end brands go to for the best buttons and trims. So I was spending a lot of money to make Mm. these coats. And so I was charging a lot of money for these coats. They were a challenge. That being said, had I stuck with it, maybe I would have made more of a success of it because uh, Bendel's was interested in my coats, which for those who don't remember Bendel's, that was a very high-end store. Um, yes. Fifth Cotton's, Avenue. Very yes. high-end Fifth Avenue in New York City. Mm-hmm. And, um, and a lot of people loved these coats. So, but I got frustrated and I didn't have a mentor. Mm. Didn't have a ment- mentors are so important. Uh, so I kind of felt like I was in it on my own and I didn't know this business and I made a lot of mistakes and wasted a lot of money and got very frustrated. So I made some beautiful things. I kept my samples. Um, I had clients, private clients, and I, and I, designed with them um, some beautiful coats and made some coats for them. But I moved on. I moved on into more of a comfort zone for me as a longtime publicist. And that turned into a company that I called Bark and Swagger. And Bark and Swagger was a um, blog about living stylishly with your dog and rescue because I had become very passionate about rescuing animals. And it also became a podcast back in 2014 on Pet Life Radio Network. And um, I had a blast doing that. I interviewed people in the pet fashion space. I interviewed Isaac Mizrahi when he entered the pet fashion space. Um, And I uh, did stories on people in the rescue space, people who wrote books about Uh, shelter animals and um, people who ran shelters doing like really interesting and amazing things. And I still do Bark and Swagger, the podcast uh, that's still active and alive on Pet Life Radio. And um, I I let the blog go uh, probably in 2017 because I pivoted again. And I pivoted into something very, very different for me. And I did this with my then husband and his adult son. And it was something in the finishes space. And it was something very artistic. It was in liquid metals and liquid concrete. And it was really art meets architecture, which is what interested me, the art 
part of it. And we did some beautiful work. Um, and that was something that was short lived while I was doing my pet stuff. You the have been a founder and business owner for so long and many times over. Like to me, instead of calling you founder and business owner, I really just want to call you boss. Like that's really just who you are. <laughs> As you're sharing your journey with us, I think what will be valuable for our audience to understand is what was it in you that allowed for you just to evolve and go from one to the other without feeling a sense of failure? And if you did mm -hmm. have a sense of failure, how did you grapple with that? With mm -hmm. Get, regain the courage each and every time. Like, you know, you had JLMPR, mm -hmm. which is very successful. And then you close that down. Then you went to the next and then Sophie's dog. And you, then you went right. Bark and sweat. Like, how do you stay up? How do you keep keeping the courage up to continue putting one foot in front of the right. other? You're now in a whole other space around being a pet health expert and a coach. So just, if you can answer for us first, those emotions and where you go maybe to get the courage and get the strength and the motivation to keep going. Cause I think for many people, they get discouraged relatively easily. If something mm -hmm. doesn't work out, I think mm -hmm. one of the things that many entrepreneurs are faced with is not knowing when to pull out, like, you know, when do you continue to put more mm -hmm. good money after bad? So if you can just speak yeah. to that, and then let us know about what you're doing now and how you're feeling now as a pet yes. health expert and coach. Yes. There are absolutely times when I felt a sense of failure. Um, I am a glass is half full person and I'm grateful for that. And I'm a human being and I tried things I explored things. I saw what worked for me and what didn't work for me. And the time to get out is when you realize either you're not feeling passionate about what you're doing or you have done research and are seeing that you can't make a living, the kind of living that you want to make doing what you do. So then maybe it becomes, if you're passionate about it, maybe it becomes like a side hustle or something that you do in your spare time, but you find something that you're passionate about that you can make work as a business. The other important piece is mind work. I did mind work and that came late in my life. I am, you know, not in my forties or even in my fifties. Um, and I'm grateful that I discovered uh, people like Bob Proctor and learned how to control the way I think, because we are all, most of us, controlled, our behavior is controlled by our paradigms or the things that we think about ourselves that maybe we learned in childhood that don't work for us and aren't true, but they're things that we do believe and we can change them and we can replace them with things that do work for ourselves. And that is what I do. That is how I stay in a high vibration and in a very positive mindset. And that ultimately what I learned is how I create in my life, create the life that I want and create beautiful opportunities coming into my life. So Jody, I mean, all of this evolution and all this evolving and pivoting, do you have any concerns at all about money? Because I think for many people, there's a concern about getting the bag and not having enough money. So that often keeps them saddled to jobs with golden handcuffs, many. And that's it's a blessing to have good jobs. We know that, right? 401ks and all that. And all this evolving. But I also feel like there's some people who might be on the fence but not know how to disengage with the financials that they get from their everyday. Do I have concerns about money? Sometimes. What I, what I do is I work my mind to live in abundance. And 
I, this is my philosophy that I've learned through the mind work that I've done. God, we are, we are created in God's image, the universe, whatever you spirit, whatever you call uh, that. And God, the universe spirit wants the best for us, everything for us, our dream life, whatever we want. So I dream big and I visualize the life that I want to lead as if I'm already living it. Um, it's, it's, I think, called something like the actor's it's, a, it's, a, it's an actor's process, what they do when they go into a role. Um, and by doing that, I am creating the energy of being in that space. And that is how I am behaving. And that is what I'm sending out into the universe. And the universe is sending back opportunity to me. And it works. So I live in abundance. And I think, don't think small now. If you have a dream and you want to pursue that dream and you have a good job and you want to start creating that dream, keep your good job while you're starting to create that dream. You know, have money coming in to put food on the table and a roof over your head. And so you're not stressed out about that while you're creating your dream. But think big. Think about everything you want. No limits because the universe wants you to have it. Yeah. I think, you know, there was a saying from Marianne Williams that I read a long time ago about the universe conspiring with us that we're co-creating exactly. every single day. And exactly. I think two different mindsets, right? Jody, some people feel like life is conspiring against them. You can wake up with that mindset to your point about mind work, thinking that the world is working against you or that I've arisen for the day. I'm grateful for another opportunity to live in my purpose. And I know that abundance will find me if I live in my purpose and in my calling, if we really believe that. But we have to often battle a lot of demons to actually get to actually believe that as truth. Yes, it's practice every single day because practice, it's called constant spaced repetition. Saying that goal, everybody needs a goal written down, a concise goal of what they want. And repeating that goal every single day, several times a day, listening to that goal, looking at that goal, um, thinking about who you want to be as if you're already here and taking what you just said, Olivia, which makes total sense, one step further and saying, I am, yes, I am grateful that I'm doing what I love. I'm living in my purpose. I'm passionate about it. And abundance comes into my life every day. It's already found me. It's, yes. already here. it's here. So that yes. is the pivot into living it. And therefore putting that out and the universe conspiring with us to present that back to us in the form of opportunities and everything else to take us across the bridge from here to there. So, Jody, tell us, if you will, you are a pet health expert now, today, right? Can you tell us more about what you're doing in this space and how you're leading this particular industry? Um, yes, but I want to clarify that becoming a pet health expert isn't something I just decided to do a couple of years ago. I have been amassing knowledge for probably 30 some odd years that inform what I'm doing now. What did happen a couple of years ago is I decided to marry my love of natural medicine that I've had for decades with my love of animals and do something that was truly authentic for me. And um, so what I bring to that space is the knowledge that I've amassed over the years about natural ways of healing, like homeopathy, like herbs, like essential oils, like frequency scanning, like nutrition. Um, and just to clarify what it is that 
a pet health coach does and a coach does in general. Um, we are your champions. We are your cheerleaders. We are knowledge transfer, knowledge transfer and resource providers. Um, we help you get from where you are now and whether that's a challenge you have with your pet or with your own health to your goal, where you want to be. And we do that by helping you to go deeper inside of you so that you can get to know you or your pet better because the answers to all of our questions are already inside. And the resources that we bring to the table, the suggestions that I give my pet parents of ways to either get their dog or cat on the right path to a vibrant good health or to help solve challenges that they may have. Um, sometimes that is just me and the pet parent working together. Sometimes that means bringing another expert into our circle because I'm not a vet and I'm not a doctor when it comes to my human clients. And to be a responsible coach, coaches sometimes suggest or bring experts in other lanes into the circle. But we are kind of like the quarterback and we bring it all together and make it make sense and guide and cheerlead. And it's valuable because I've seen the results that my pet parents have gotten for their animals and for themselves. And I've seen the results that my human clients have gotten uh, to have a coach in your corner. Do you mind sharing just maybe one example? For those of us, I don't have a pet, mm -hmm. I'm not a pet owner. I have friends mm -hmm. who are. So for anybody who might be like, hmm, I'm intrigued, give us an example of a result that a pet might have received from your work and then also a pet parent. Perfect. Um, I work with a client whose dog is very anxious, reactive with other dogs. And he and his girlfriends are very stressed when it comes to taking their dog out for walks and they live in the country. So, uh, but there's a lot, there are a lot of dogs around and people, and she's also reactive to strangers, human strangers. So through our work together over the course of three months, um, I introduced uh, certain nutritional uh, changes. Um, I introduced uh, essential oils. I introduced mind work and I introduced a process that I call love touch, but I didn't create it. It actually is something that came from uh, Temple Grandin that she used to do to help calm herself with her autism anxiety. And um, it works really, really well for dogs. So it's a massage type of procedure. And through all of this, and when I say mind work, that is a core feature because we emotionally transfer whatever is going on for us, just as dogs and cats do with us. They're very highly intuitive beings. So doing that, um, she is now able to go on walks and not be as reactive. They have tools now to avoid her getting into the red zone. They know what to look for when she's entering the orange zone so they can keep her in the green zone. And there are so many pet parents that have pets with anxiety, all different types of anxiety. It is the number one most Googled uh, challenge for pet parents. There are tools that you can have in your kit that can help your animal and therefore help you and help your life be saner, calmer. So that's one with a pet. 
with a human, um, I am working with someone who looks at our sessions as being a sacred space, safe space for him to talk, share feelings. Um, his goal was to lose some weight and he's doing that. But losing weight and not but, losing weight all starts, everything starts up here. So it's important for him in some of our ses sessions to just talk about what's going on for him. And I create the space for him to do that. So whatever my human client's challenges are, creating a safe space and meeting them where they are is the keys to helping them achieve their goals. Jody Teich, thank you so much for being with us today. I love that you are a woman on a mission who's living a life that's truly mission-centered and you're living on purpose, right? With a lot of intentionality. My final question, if you would offer to the Freedom at the Mac community, if you could share with us, for anyone who is watching or listening to this video and they're inspired by all of the pivots you've made in your life and you leaning into your passion, what advice would you have to offer to anyone who is seeking help on how they can lean into their highest being, their highest calling, and their maximum potential? Never give up. If you are passionate about something, don't give up on it. Um, do your mind work. Go deep. Find the courage in you to look at why you do what you do. Where does your behavior come from? Is it something that doesn't work for you? Is it something you can work on to let go by imagining who you want to be as if you're already here? And be open to the opportunities that come into your life. Don't judge them. Look at them and see if they can work for you. And if they can, don't be afraid to try because it's only through trying that we know and listening inside to what our heart tells us and to what the universe sends to us, our intuition that we know what's truly right for us, but never give up. Jody, thank you so much. You know how much I love you. I'm inspired by Jody because as I'd mentioned at the top, I've known Jody for a really long time. She's been one of my mentors, one of my advisors for over 15 years. And I feel like as I get older, I am coming across a number of people who were giving up. We feel like, well, if I haven't done it by now, then it's not gonna happen. And we're just kind of living lives. Some of us are living lives that are not fully realized. And I hope that you're encouraged by Jody. I hope that after listening to today's conversation, that you are inspired to lean into your passion, to do it wisely, as she said, but to lean into your passion and to truly continue to evolve. May God continue to be with you. Namaste.